was weird. OK. Um, but yes, yeah, so if you guys look under, um, you can see all of your assignments are like under the week one, two, et cetera here. Um, if you click on any of these, I basically, again, so I just have Google links um, to a Google Drive. Um, and you can go in and like see the requirements for the assignment. Um, I still need to go, like the first few weeks are done. I still need to go back and like finish the first, or like some of the later assignments. Um, but that's how you can find all your stuff. Um, if you have any questions or if like the Google Drive links aren't working, um, please let me know as soon as possible and I'll get those fixed. Um, the reason I set it up like this is I have three sections and if I need to like make a change, um, it's, it's just easier and like less error prone to do it in a single Google Doc than to like do it across three different uh, assignments, if that makes sense. Um, but anywho, so um, if you go into the resources and tutorials tab, um, again, for those of you that I uh, had last quarter, it's pretty much the same info there. Um, uh, this free resources is just like a link to, if, you're, if you happen to be like working at home and you want like a free Photoshop alternative, something like that. Um, strictly speaking, I really don't care what you use for like modifying your images and textures and stuff. Um, obviously, if it's like some weird program um, and I can't open the file, like I can't help you troubleshoot it. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm not gonna like hold you guys to using Photoshop if you're working at home. Um, I realize these programs are expensive and obnoxious, and yeah, um, which is why again I have that free resources folder. Um, tutorials, just like a link to specific tutorials I've made. Um, you can also go. So this uh, is a link to the YouTube channel, which is called Grumpy Allison Teacher. If you just want like want to search it, but this is like where I pretty much dump all of the. Um, uh, class recordings and such. Um, and sometimes I'll also just make like random additional tutorials that I'll throw up. And if I do that, I'll usually like shoot, the, uh, shoot you guys an email. Um, just be like, hey guys, like I uploaded the class videos or like here's some random tutorials. Um, and I'll link those there as well, just so you guys are, don't need to like perpetually check the YouTube. Um, um, but yeah, and then here's like a link to policy information that I've uploaded to Google Drive. Um, I made a little list of like my hotkeys that I personally use frequently. Um, so if you guys ever are like looking to get more proficient with hotkeys, that might be something you want to reference. Um, and then I have office hours from 12.30 to 3.30 uh, Tuesdays. Um, and that should be in, uh, it's like 220D, I believe. Um, it's like a little adjunct office. Like if you know where Daphne's office is, it's like right in that same little like chunk of, of cubicles. Um, but yeah. Um, and I'm pretty much always available by email. Um, I usually check my email a few times a day, so um, yeah, that's that. Um, so if you go syllabus and course info, you can download the like official version of the syllabus here. Um, here's another link to the um, Google Drive for class policy, which we'll take a look at in a second. Um, and then just another note about office hours. Um, I usually don't do office hours week one because I feel like like nobody ever comes to them. Um, so I'm probably won't come in early tomorrow. Um, but every other week I'm pretty much here. I do have, I have a class from like 3.30 to 6, so I just like hang out before that class pretty much, um, is when I do office hours. Um, so any questions about any of that, like how Learn is set up so far? Cool. Um, all right, so here is the beautiful Google Drive of random class policy. Um, just like standard Drexel policy really quick. Um, so there's a bit about attendance. Um, uh, if you miss three days of class, um, I pretty much have to automatically fail you. Um, this is not a policy I decided on, it's just like a standard Drexel policy. Um, I'll try to let you know if, like if I notice you've missed two weeks of class or something like that, I'll like let you know, um, or try to, but just like keep a, um, be aware of like how many days you are actually missing, um, if that makes sense. Um, obviously if there's some kind of emergency situation, like you know, you get hit by a bus or there's like some kind of family emergency or something, um, just let me know and I will excuse that um, because like obviously if you're, you know, sick or you need to deal with family stuff, I'm not going to be like, come to class, you're a bad person. Um, and then you get one uh, excused absence due to sickness per quarter. Um, for that to count, just like email me, um, preferably before you miss class and be like, hey, I am diseased and will not be in. Um, and then if I, if you ever email me about being sick and I, still mark you absent. Um, that was probably just a clerical error, so shoot me an email and be like, hey, I was sick, please don't mark me absent. Um, any questions on that? Cool. Um, and then plagiarism, like, don't do it. Don't, you know, steal models from, like, other people in your class or the internet and submit them as your own work. Um, 
fairly self-explanatory. Um, the other thing, so um, not strictly plagiarism, but um, anything you make for this course should be um, made during this course, if that makes sense. If you have like, if you made like screws for an object and you want to like reuse them in a model, um, like that's totally fine. I don't really care. If you're like populating a scene with stuff and you're like, oh, I could use like the headphones I made from CGI one, like that's fine. But if the if the assignment is like model an object, don't submit an object you made last quarter for this quarter. Um, yeah. Um, hopefully that all makes sense. Um, all right. Uh, and then in terms of actual grading of the assignments, um, here is how grades are broken down in terms of like, you know, letters or like the numbers correspond to what uh, letter grade. Um, for this class, 10% um, of your final grade is going to be attendance and participation. Um, participation, I will be enforcing uh, a little bit more this quarter. Um, and if I was, <laughs> I'm probably actually just gonna do a really awkward thing and like write everyone's name down in a hat. And if no one's like say anything during crit, I'll just like grab a name and be like, cool, say something. <laughs> um, but yeah, so again, 10% attendance and participation, 35% is the weekly assignments and extra credit. Um, I'll get to the extra credit in a little bit. I feel like I set that up differently from like most other teachers. Um, and 45% will be your final project and related assignments. Um, so like pre-production for your final. Uh, and then 10% is how well your projects basically look like the orthographics or like the object you were trying to model. So like if you're trying to model a stapler and you have pictures of said stapler, does the stapler you made look like the actual pictures that you took? Um, and then here's just like a little bit of a breakdown about um, how like the weekly grades and stuff are calculated. Um, when I look at a model, I take into account like the complexity, um, execution topology, is the mesh really broken? Um, so I guess an example that I get, so if you, if you model like a drinking glass, just like a simple cylindrical drinking glass, um, even if you model it like super well, and it's like a perfect mesh, that's still gonna get a lower grade than modeling like a stapler because a stapler is a much more complex object and requires more effort to model, if that makes sense. Um, so I mean, don't kill yourself. Like, you know, don't pick like the most insane object you can to try to get a higher grade. I would rather you make something of moderate complexity and do it well than choose something like crazy complex and have just like a, you know, hideous exploded mesh. Um, does that make sense? Cool. Um, pretty much the same deal on textures. Um, I'm gonna be looking at like the quality and the realism of textures. Um, texture resolution is a big one. Um, so definitely make sure that, you know, if you put like a wood grain texture on it, um, is one I see a lot where it's just like, it'll be like a wood grain on a background of a render kind of thing, but it's like a really like low res grainy image. Um, try to avoid that as much as possible because it does look kind of funky. Um, and then stuff, um, just in general, like if you're ever looking to maybe, um, spice up your project or like potentially boost your grade a little bit. Um, you can go ahead and like, if textures weren't required, like go ahead and add textures. Um, it just sort of like could potentially earn you some extra like polish points on the assignment. Um, same basic principle for like lighting and background. Um, in the case of lighting, um, does it show off your model well? Mostly like, can I see your object? Um, are there areas that are like so bright that they're blown out and you can't see it or like so dark that you just can't see what's happening? Um, also, if there's plain dome lights, um, just like a dome light with no HDRI mapped in, um, I will dot points for that. Please throw in an HDRI. It takes literally like 30 seconds to download one from online and just like throw one in. Um, um, and then if you're ever like rendering your objects or doing a turntable or something, um, please put in some kind of background. Um, the minimum would be like a gray, gray plane and walls behind it. Um, if you have nothing and your object is floating in blackness, I will deduct points for that. Um, and then if you, you know, do something nice where you like make a nice looking wooden table or something like that, um, that could be something that could also earn you more points just for polish. Um, render angles mostly just like, if you made a super awesome object, don't render it like with the camera really far away so it's super tiny. Um, yeah, pretty much that. Um, and then you guys are welcome to, for your assignments, um, if you guys wanna do like creative artsy angles that like show off specific parts of your model, so like zoom in on one area kind of deal, um, you are more than welcome to do that. Those are fun and they do kind of help show off the object. Um, and I guess they're a little bit more interesting, I guess, than just sort of like 
here is my model just like on a table. Um, but yeah, um, that's pretty much that. Um, does that make sense? Cool. Um, and here's just my like giant weird thing of like, if I'm looking at, if I'm like grading assignments, so like usually I'll do um, render angles is kind of like 15% of the total grade. Um, and then same thing with lighting and background, 15%. Uh, and then most of the grade is gonna be the model texture and quality. Um, and then depending on, you know, if it's an assignment to only model an object, obviously that'll be texture, just ignore that. Um, and then I made a, so here's just like a list, um, which I may or may not add to throughout the quarter, but um, just some like generic things that I see sort of happening a lot um, that are sort of like standard things that I will either add polish points for or like deduct points for. Um, and again, most of these are like pretty pretty easy fixes. Like make sure your renders are the wrong size. Make sure your renders are the right size. Um, correct format um, for stuff. Um, I think usually for images I ask for like TIFFs or PNGs um, in images like MP4 and MOVs. Um, and then just like, again, just like put stuff in the file, in the project folder, like where it should be. Um, these are really things that like, again, pretty easy fixes um, that going forward, like if you're working in a job, um, you'll have to fo follow like specific, um, usually like specific naming conventions and like put, put files in certain places. Um, so this is just sort of preparing you guys for that. Um, going forward also, most teachers have um, pretty strict stuff about naming conventions, which is like the one thing I really personally just don't care about, but um, I do care about like where things are and if they're in the right format, especially the format stuff. Um, so any questions on any of this stuff? Cool. Um, and then in terms of resubmits, um, I do allow resubmits. Um, they are due one week after the original due date of the assignment. Um, just in Blackboard Learn, um, you should be able to submit unlimited numbers of times for each assignment, so just submit over your original assignment. Um, please make a note that it is a resubmit when you do that and note any changes that you made just so I know like what to look for. Um, I wanna make sure if you guys improve something that I actually um, you know, look at that and can give you feedback on that and I actually notice it for your grade. Um, the, the only assignments that are not eligible for resubmits are basically um, like written assignments or non-production assignments. Um, so there's a few things where you have to like write a PDF of like describe your project, um, stuff like that. Um, again, those aren't really el eligible for resubmits. Um, and then non-production. Hmm? I'm sorry? Uh, late assignments are. Um, just keep in mind, so like if you submit the assignment, if you submit it late, um, the resubmit is still due one week after the original due date of the assignment. Um, and then also like depending on, like if you submit it and I'm like, you know, out running errands or something all day, like I'm, I can't necessarily give you feedback. Um, usually I grade stuff like for this, uh, for this quarter, it'll be like Tuesday night or like Wednesday morning afternoon-ish. Um, so usually I'll have your grades in like within a day or two of actually submitting stuff. Um, any other questions? Cool. Um, but yeah, so the non-production assignments, um, or production assignments are basically anything where you're making like models or textures, um, doing rendering, basically anything you're like working in Maya to create assets. Um, and then just a note, um, so any penalties from the original assignment, um, like lateness or like rendering at the wrong size, et cetera, um, will remain on the resubmit, um, especially lateness, mostly because doing a resubmit isn't like a get out of turning in your assignment late free card. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much my resubmit policy. Um, and then my super, wah, um, so like, oh, I see. Uh, so the weird thing that I do in this class, which is like kind of different, um, is extra credit. Um, I made this unholy, uh, if you go into like student resources, um, this is incidentally uh, where you can find all of your assignments is just like in this assignments folder. Um, and I made this folder for extra credit. And I just have like all of these really random extra credit assignments you can do. Um, some of them are the same as last quarter, um, like the food one, um, because I like food. Uh, <laughs> but um, it's basically just like extra sort of random assignments that you can do in whatever style that you want. Um, you can do low poly, high poly, 
Um, for texturing, it doesn't need to be realistic. You could do a hand-painted texture if you wanted. You could try to like do something really experimental. Um, kind of whatever. They're designed to be a little bit more freeform, let you practice something that might be a little bit more fun. Um, because especially this class is like focuses really uh, heavily on hyperrealism. Um, so yeah. So extra credit. Um, they should all be available on Learn by now. Um, usually they're due like. Again, you can do them pretty much any time throughout the quarter. Um, they are eligible to do resubmit. So if I give you feedback and you want to like resubmit, um, you're welcome to. Um, and basically, how I calculate these into your grade is I'll take whatever points you earn from the extra credit, combine them with the points you earn from the weekly assignments, and then divide by the points possible on weekly assignments. Um, so if you get you know if you earn 25, say like 25 out of 100 or something on a extra credit. I'm not going to count that as like a 25%. It's just adding those 25 point points uh, into the points for your weekly assignments, if that makes sense. Um, so conceivably, you could actually get more than 100% on your weekly assignments. Um, and I do have like one assignment in here that is um, that actually is factored into your final grade instead <coughs> of weeklies, uh, which is noted in large, obnoxious red letters. Um, but yeah. Um, so any questions about? the extra credit itself. Um, hopefully they're pretty self-explanatory. I tried to do, um, the popular one like last quarter was like an anime extra credit and most people did weapons so I just sort of, you know, turned that into like another, um, another thing where like all things sharp is like the sort of cartoon anime, like pick a, pick a weapon or like prop from like an anime or cartoon. You could do something realistic if you wanted to, it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, some of them are super random. If you guys actually have any ideas for extra credit, let me know. Um, I like to try to get really weird with them. So, <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, yeah, and then late penalties. Um, so this is basically the same thing I did last quarter, um, but it's the first 24 hours that it's late, uh, it's 10% off of the final grade. And then each additional 24 hours it's late is another 5% off the grade. Um, so here's like the example of if you submit it seven days late, um, it's 10 points for the first day and then five points for each additional day, um, which is basically 40 points late. Um, so you can, at that point, you can only earn 60 points on that assignment, if that makes sense. Um, so, ag and again, one of the reasons that I do extra credits um, is if you happen to turn in assignments late, the extra credits kind of give you a chance to, uh, to boost that grade. Um, so I will be adhering to the, the late penalties and all of the other penalties since you do have I made the extra credits actually worth more this quarter, um, so I think there's like possibly like two or three hundred points of extra credit you can use uh, or you can get, um, and you only have like five weekly assignments which are worth like a hundred points, so that's like a lot of extra credit if you guys like pull really cool stuff on that. Um, anywho, um, so after 19 days, just to be uh, aware, that's basically the cutoff for like a hundred percent of the points will be deducted um, just because of lateness. Um, so if it's, you know, if you're submitting something like a month late, I'll still get, I'll still give you feedback on late assignments because I feel like that's important, but I'll also just give you a zero for that assignment because it's a month late. Um, and then, so any, any questions on any of that? All right. Um, so the other thing that I'm doing a little bit differently than last quarter, um, if you, so pre-production assignments that are submitted like after the final assignment, um, won't be counted. Um, so for example, if you like don't turn in any pre-production assignments for the final, uh, and then you submit your final and also submit like the same work for the last like three pre-production assignments, I'm not gonna grade them um, because the whole point of pre-production is to, um, I mean for one, like keep yourself on a specific time track so you're not like rush jobbing it, but also so that you can get feedback from me uh, and other people in the class. Um, so, again, that's why, like, do your best to turn stuff in on time, um, especially, like, for the final. Um, that's where that's most relevant. Um, any questions on that? Cool. Um, I think, I think that was all of the weird policy stuff, unless I've gone crazy. Where am I going? Oh, yeah. Um, and then this, I'm not going to go through this like super specifically right now, um, but here, and I've, I've linked this in basically all the assignments, but like here's the general, like if you're rendering things, please do it at 1920 by 1080, like format for images, um, you know, rendering engines. It's like basically all of the generic, like 
specs for videos and stuff like that you should be submitting. Since they're the same every assignment, I just made like one doc instead of writing the same thing over and over. Um, so it's mostly, again, pretty much all here. Um, I give you, for the Maya files, just like, you know, name stuff logically. Um, if I have to look in your Maya file um, and I see like PQ1 and all of your objects are like PQ1, I will find you. Um, <laughs> um, it is super confusing though, especially because like this quarter um, you're probably gonna have like more objects in your scene, so it's just like it is it is very confusing to go in and like look at something with like 70 PQ ones. I'm like, oh god. Um, anywho, um, so in terms of orth like orthographics, um, I said this last quarter. I really don't care if you do um, like cell phone pics for stuff. Uh, just make sure that if you're because like I realize not everyone has HDR cameras or like fancy cameras or wants to you know break them out for like a really basic thing just make sure if you do use cell phone pictures th um, that they are of a reasonable quality um, make sure they're not like crazy grainy like out of focus um, that kind of thing honestly I take most of my pictures with my phone and half of the product photography on Etsy was done with my phone I just take care to like make sure that the images look halfway decent um, so that's my shtick um, ideally you can take uh, you would photograph all of the objects yourself um, but especially like for the final this quarter if you're doing some like weird type of chair or something you might need to grab orthos from the internet um, in which case it's probably a good idea to supplement with like hand-drawn like if you can only find one angle of that chair um, supplement it with your own hand-drawn images so you have something to work off of um, blah 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 cool hand-drawn reference and then if you're doing hand-drawn reference again with the phone just try to make sure that like the image quality is halfway decent um, I found that a, a sort of good way, if you're, if you've like drawn orthographics, um, if you have like a light source, say this computer, sort of hold your notebook or whatever you drew on perpendicular to computer, so light is like shining across the surface. And then if you take a picture like this, you won't have you know the shadow from the phone or like whatever you're using on top of the image. Um, I found that to work really nicely as opposed to like, you know, doing this. At which point the computer is just like shadowing the phone, which is like obscuring the drawing. Um, um, and then I just like listed again where everything should be in your project folder. Um, so yeah, like renders and images folder, played last and movies, scenes, etc. Um, is anybody not, I, I assume like you guys all learn project folder structure and stuff in CGI one. Cool. Um, if I'm ever like talking about something uh, and you guys like didn't learn that whatever class it was or you need a refresher again, just like yell out, let me know. Um, yeah, that's pretty much that. Um, helpful links, I actually don't remember what this was. Um, oh yeah, and then here's just like some more uh, random, ah yes, yes, this is what I wanted to show you. Um, here's just like other links, um, you can get free digital tutors, um, free lynda.com if you get a, a Philly library card, um, that kind of stuff. Um, there is a bit of, so I actually, s <laughs> I actually hijacked, uh, you can transfer classes on Blackboard Learn, so I stole another adjunct class, so there's like, uh, some of her random tutorials and like resources in there. Um, I decided to leave them in there in case you guys want to reference them. Um, just be aware, especially like when we get to later assignments, um, the syllabus has changed since then. So there might be some like random PowerPoints talking about like fruitful assignments. Um, if you see that, don't panic. It's this, it's just changed course, but I figured, you know, some of the information might still be relevant. So I did leave it in there. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much Blackboard Learn, I think. Um, any any questions on any of the random policy stuff before we move on to other things? Alrighty then. Um, all right. So just make sure. Cool, cool, cool. Um, all right. So in case you guys haven't figured this out from CGI one, pretty much all of the production classes for um, anim or game majors are like kind of a lot of work. Um, so. Again, I, I assume you know this by now, but like this class is gonna be a lot of work. Um, it goes over, um, I mentioned this before, um, so the class focuses pretty heavily this quarter on hyperrealism. Um, so trying to get things as realistic and sort of natural looking as possible. Um, another reason I kind of included like, if you guys wanna do you know hand painted food for your extra credit, you guys are welcome to, to play with other textures. Um, Cause I do think that's valuable and fun, honestly, um, to just experiment with different things. Um, but anywho, so this class is gonna cover things like um, modeling from, like just, you know, continuing to model from reference like you've been doing. Um, 
preparing and building 3D environments, um, working on getting better at making realistic textures as well as recognizing when something looks rendery, when something looks like it's you know been created digitally. A lot of times it's like it's super clean as an object or it has like perfect 90 degree angles. Like these are things that usually are kind of like red flags that this might be a render. Um, uh, learning to light scenes a bit more realistically. Um, we'll be going uh, more over multiple rendering engines. Um, today I'm just going to go over Arnold, um, but in the future we're going to work uh, more with Redshift. Um, and we might touch on RenderMan. Um, I found that nobody really... <coughs> I found that for assignments, most people don't tend to use RenderMan. Um, which, in case you didn't know, is the render engine that Pixar released, um, or that they use for things. Um, they released it, and you can actually download it for free online. Um, if you do want to play with it, but I think I feel like, um, especially in like the later animation classes, when you guys have to you know render 720 frames a week, uh, a lot of people do favor Redshift because it's faster. Um, so unless there are objections, um, I was planning on focusing mostly on Arnold because it comes with Maya, and then Redshift because it's fast and delightful. Um, but yeah, um, that's pretty much that. Um, another note, um, so. I, Presumably you guys know about AW Express at this point, um, but if it's really good. Um, so there's like the Digum share on AW Express. Um, if you just go into like this PC on on the PCs at least, um, you just you know click on that, um, and then there should be your class folder, and you can just store stash all of your files there. Um, I would highly recommend backing up your files in multiple places. Um, a lot of usually I'll do like a local copy on my computer have one on a flash drive to bring in the labs and then like make a stash on AW Express just so um, if your computer explodes you have backups to go to if you know for some reason you can't access AW Express you have local copies you can rely on um, I did actually have like a few people last quarter I'm like oh my god my computer crashed um, but yeah you can also actually use the um, not ideal all the time, but you can actually use submissions from Learn and like re-download those if you're ever really desperate. Um, and you can just go back and like sort of start working from there. Again, if your computer explodes and that's like the only backup you have access to, you can totally do that. Um, but yeah. Um, also, Google Drive, it's amazing. Um, all right, I think that's I think that's pretty much all of the random policy nonsense I have. Um, so are there any questions before we jump into Maya slash descriptions of the final? Is it? Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. Um, all right. Yeah. So the final for this course, um, is a little bit different. So, um, so like remember last quarter when I, we did that thing, or at least in my classes where it's like, oh yeah, like make teams and then do like two weird written assignments and then don't use your teams anymore. Um, this class you are actually working in teams for the final. Um, so basically what we're going to be doing this quarter is creating three objects. So one, uh, one main object, one hero object, um, a piece of furniture, and a random decorative object. Um, and you're going to break up into teams of three or four. Um, and basically each of you are going to make those three objects I just mentioned. And then you're going to sort of share all of the objects together. Um, so as a team, you'll decide sort of you're going to make like a workshop space. Uh, you're going to decide you know what time period that's from, what what the possible workshop is. So maybe you decide like I'm going to make a workshop of a Victorian toy maker or something like that. Um, so you basically all choose different objects within that space to make. And then once you're done, you sort of share all of those objects, uh, and each person is going to make their own version of the workshop space. So like. The th like the room that you're going to put this stuff in, basically. Um, and take all of those objects, populate the space, uh, and basically render it with your own interpretation of lighting and texturing and all of that good stuff. Um, so again, each person, is, um, each person is responsible for a hero object, furniture object, and decorative object, and those are going to be shared among everyone. Uh, the individual is going to take your objects and the ones from all of your teammates, create a space to put them in, and then texture that space. Um, the, when you make the hero objects and stuff, you should be texturing those and then transferring the textures to your teammates as well. Um, so it's not like one person has to texture like 40 different objects. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and then you can choose, so like for the final renders, um, and I'll explain like the final render bit later, but um, basically at least one render should be, you know, focusing on the objects that you created. Um, and then you can choose to focus on the other objects or like whatever other parts of your scene kind of as much as you want. Um, but you do need to at least focus your objects on like one render for your stuff because obviously you want to show off your work that you did. Um, but yeah, any other questions about that? Like the, the orthographic? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't necessarily have a problem with that. Um, again, just like make sure that they're decent quality. Um, I'm also like, like I've been doing freelance 3D modeling for years, so like, you know, if you can, obviously it's good to have things as, as best quality as you can, but like I have worked off sketches people have sent me that are completely hideous. Um, I made someone like a Goblin Slayer helmet on a commission and they like refused to tell me what it was from so I just worked off like a tiny 200 pixel image from the manga and then I realized after I made it that it was from Goblin Slayer, like someone recognized it and I googled Goblin Slayer and I'm like, oh my god, there's hundreds of images, I hate this person. Um, but yeah, so again, in ideal world, like practice the ideal but like be aware, especially if you work with like crazy freelance client people that you might need to work with hideous orthographic. Um, um, but yes, short story, yes, I don't mind if you draw your own orthographics. Um, yeah, any other questions about that? Cool, cool. Um, 